What is up, everyone? Uh, Kirkonium Gaming here. It's been a while, um, but uh, I've been really getting into uh, Watcher of Realms in the last little while and um, progressing through the content here. And, uh, you know, really, I'm still playing uh, Ray Shadow Legends, but, uh, but really getting into the content and I feel like I'm going to start doing a little bit more videos here on um, Watcher of Realms, uh, just because it's different. Uh, it's um, I'm in really enjoying it. There's a lot of stuff. Um, I've been getting some pretty decent uh, characters here, heroes, um, leveling them up, and really slowly progressing my way through the game. Um, and uh, you know, just starting to beat some of the content. So I feel like as a relatively new player, been only playing for a few months now, some of these videos might actually help some newer players. So without further ado, uh, today's video is really going to be on the new codexes. So don't get me wrong, I'm not, amazing um these these scores definitely have room for improvement uh, but i'm just going to quickly go through some of the strategies involved with these um codexes and and some of the um, heroes that you can bring on board so to start abomination um is a great champion uh, you can actually get one. I actually, he was my very first pulled legendary. Uh, and then I pulled a duplicate of him shortly after. And then, of course, I fused him. So that's why he's uh, awakened to level two. Um, but really, you can fuse him to get him and then um, get him to A1 if you pull him. Uh, Wrath. Uh, Wrath is a lord, um, but everyone does get a Wrath. Wrath is pretty amazing champion, especially for this faction. Volca, just got to do all your missions uh, and quests. You can get Volca. Um, I did pull Lust in the guaranteed last event, uh, but ultimately this one you only want to bring uh, fighters on. So the object of the game is to kill as many monsters as you can, uh, as quick as you can. So this is kind of my starting strategy. Uh, I will put Lust here in the middle uh, just because she can hit everyone. Uh, Gluttony can go there. I need the uh, Lifesteal from here. And then uh, I actually, actually, I don't have to wait. And then we'll go two times. So the idea here is as these monsters die uh, and as you kill them, it does damage to the boss. And then the boss will just constantly spawn these uh, monsters. Uh, I like to save off on my ultimates. Uh, the f because I'm not really going to make it to the end, um, they're going to break through this wall bef way before the end. I might as well just hold off. Uh, and th at this point, Aatrox dies, but he has a quick respawn. And then I hold on to him for a little while. Um, because now here comes the rush. Now these ads, uh, these uh, heroes can kill this stuff relatively easy, so I don't have to worry about my backline. And right about now, I'm gonna hold off on Aatrox until the second big round of monsters come in, which is right about here. And then at this point, we're gonna hold. The reason I'm holding Aatrox is just because, and then here we can start to spam our ultimates. The reason I hold Aatrox is when he dies, he does put um, an AoE spot on the floor. Um, and as the monsters pass through, they do um, damage themselves. You can kind of see that happening here in the middle of the screen. But also his, his um, death timer does get longer and longer every time he dies. So if we kill him a second time early, it's going to take him even longer to spawn back. Um, and well, that'll be problematic. Uh, and then here we go. Look, two minutes, we just broke through 
and uh, A. So this is the best I can do at this point um, with the, the uh, heroes I have. Not my best. But as we could see, Abomination does some good damage. Um, and then as we scroll down, really, uh, Volca's there for the revive um, to reduce the cooldown on revive and to provide that lifesteal for um, the rest of the champions to keep them alive. So that is the first codex. The second one is all about healing. So the idea here is you want to heal. As you could see, these are all my kind of last attempts. I've been trying different uh, heroes out, but we have mass healing, heal, 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 heal throughout that whole process just because, um, so these are, is she geared? No. We're gonna put some of my better healer gear on. I will just leave it as is. So why these healers? Uh, we have here Hollow. Hollow does um, Rage Regen, uh, as does Elowin. We have here Vortex, one of the best, easiest, but best um, heroes in the game to heal. Also provides a nice juicy shield. Um, Maidan does uh, AoE healing, uh, HP-based healing, um, and increases defense to help stay alive. Uh, and then uh, Sadie was actually one of my first heroes. And uh, what she does is when uh, blocks 50% of the damage um, incoming. So that's my kind of squad as I come in. You only have one damage dealer to start right here in the middle. What I do is I put Sadie here in the middle just to cover the most. Really, we're getting three champions plus our other healers. I have this one in the middle who increases attack speed. And then I'm going to have Hollow here. Actually, no. I had Hollow here which covers three and all my most of my healers. I do have Elo in here, which does cover. And then I put Vortex up, which will provide shielding on most of my damage. And then I have one spot left. None of these are really covered, so I do put Medan here just to cover this one. This hero, Weo, here in the corner is the only one that is not covered. So... The object of the game, the boss does slam every single time. We do have one damage dealer out here. For the most part, we can survive the first few slams. The idea is we just keep healing and keep my one damage dealer alive. The good thing about Elowin, she does get this extra healer, so I can put the extra heal on either side, depending on who's getting low. Usually it's hollow that gets low first. So now that this boss goes into rush mode, all of these come alive and now it's a batter about staying alive so we will increase attack speed increase rage regen get the cleanse out and then this is where we're going to start to use our ultimates and cycle them through so shield keep them alive ultimate keep her alive really this sadie's ultimate is to block some of that mass damage and then we keep these ultimates going. Sadie goes, blocks, and then we're going to wait, get the shield on Vortex to block, and he progressively hits harder and harder every time. So right about halfway, we want to make sure Sadie goes up, and I want to make sure help the heals on this side. And somewhere around here, we're going to die, start dying. So we want to just constantly keep these up and there we go. Now we start dying and for the most part, we're done. Uh, 
Um, usually the boss does kill us before right there. And then once the boss wipes this last wave, we're done. So the best I got was S at this point. Uh, I did, you know, move some gear around uh, and, and did have some better heals. But that's kind of the best I can do. And, and quite frankly, for an extra couple hundred, it's not really worth min-maxing uh, some of these bosses. The last one is actually kind of tricky. Um, this one is new. What you want to do is look to bring in uh, champions that do damage over time. So poisons, burns, bleeds, that sort of thing, um, as the boss does take the most amount of damage uh, based on these damage over time. So I've been really playing around with who I decide to bring in. I do believe I swapped gear off Nissalt. We'll bring him in as is, just to show you how this works. But ideally, you can get through the first few waves of these boss, this boss uh, unscathed. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, let's put our big damage dealers out. We want to get her to cover most. So we're only going to have one damage dealer not covered by heals. Want to get our poisons out. So get the weaker ones attacking. And then I have him out here. Um, so we get the constant, let's two, two X this constant damage out on the boss. There's going to be this tempest, which uh, blasts everybody. You do need to kill this shield or damage it before the, Cairo mass goes out. This is where he becomes vulnerable and takes two times damage on um, the, the damage over time debuffs. And what we're going to do is just save up. He's going to go again. We should be able to kill it a second time. And now he's vulnerable to the damage over time. And then he's going to go into his boss rush. Now everything gets faster stronger at this time the boss rush your heroes do get this life steal back in and this is when you can start here using your ultimates make sure that it goes down and you just keep damaging the boss with damage over time uh, i did put some better gear on these champions off to the side the weaker ones um Ultimately, with Screef, he is, you know, an uncommon champion, uh, but he does throw out all these poisons. So you just want mass attack speed on him. Also works great for clan boss as well. As you could see, we're now going to start to die. Oh, we just squeaked that one out. And we want to make sure we get the bleeds out, the burns out, bleeds, burns, poisons. We got all the damage over time keep healing and that's ultimately it uh, if you cannot get this cryo core uh, the shield down before the cryo core disappears like ooh, just squeak that one through again um, if you can't get it down he will do a big blast and virtually wipe out all your champions so uh, all your heroes so you do need to do as much damage as you can as quick as you can uh, and really focus on getting that down. So right about here, as you could see, it's taking a lot longer. And we're going to die. Big blast. So of course, these two are weak. When he does kill your, your heroes, he does add 60 seconds to the timer. So you can't really reduce that timer. Um, just basically, if you die, you die. And that's it. And now it's just a matter of waiting. We're going to get one more blast out. So Abomination does have a lot of health um, as well. So he does tend to stay alive and his, his ultimate. Um, he does have a passive that will regenerate his health uh, if he does get low. So that is kind of why he stays alive. 
And at this point, our timer's out and we can't make it back. So that is the best damage we can do. Uh, again, I'll just show you scores. Poorly geared champions, uncommons, um, rares and uncommons. But we look at the stats and by far he's the best damage dealer on the team. Um, and then Nissalt again, just because he's poorly geared, uh, I will work on him at some point, but just because he's poorly geared, he does still do 5 million damage in comparison to a legendary hero. So that is that. And then um, reward wise, the higher you go, the more points you do get. So again, 200 more points as you rank up. And then shop wise, this is kind of how I spent it. Of course, you're going to get the five star um, here. That is probably one of the best that you can use your uh, coins on. And then from there, I did get a couple of recasts just because, again, when you when you level up your gear and you got really good rolls on your gear, but when you enchant it, it doesn't go as high. Um, you can always recast it to try to get better rolls. And then because we do have an ancient event going on, I did summon a, uh, a couple of these just to finish off um, the rest of my points. So that is where it is at this point. You can look to min-max and you can look to try to get better um, here. And I, and I very well might try, but until I get better heroes um, and damage dealers at that, you know, this one may not complete. Until I get better AOE here, uh, healers, this one's going to be a difficult one to complete. Uh, and then I do need to rank up and level up my uh, heroes, especially those uh, rare ones. But of course, five-star chickens um, are hard to come by. So without further ado, that is about it. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.